let's take a look at the forming tool in Sheet Metal and see the different functionality that's included. So what I have here is just a, a simple part that I've created with some curved louvers that I want to stamp into my sheet metal parts. The first thing to do when you create this model is you need some kind of a, a base for a stopping surface, so just a rectangular plate is fine. And then you're going to extrude your uh, material up from that the way you want it. And what I'm doing here is I'm actually patterning them so I have multiple instances. Because of this, uh, we actually have to keep this stopping plate because you can't have multiple bodies, uh, so we have to keep it as a single body. If you look at some of the other tools uh, within the design library here, we have for some forming tools here, and if you look at the louver, if I open this up, you can see that they actually removed, uh, they actually go ahead and remove that stopping face because you don't need it, but when you have multiple instances, you do need it because you can't have a multi-body forming tool. So looking at this, uh, once you have it all done, you need, need to make sure you have the fillets on the edges so it's nice and smooth. These sharp edges here, I'm going to have faces to remove, uh, so you want to have a sharp edge so it can do a clean cut on there. So within our sheet metal tab, we'll go to the forming tool, we'll choose a stopping face, and for faces to remove, we can grab these underside faces here. I can grab the tangency for each of those. And for the point of insertion, if you click there, you'll see uh, by default it puts it right at the origin, but you can feel free to drag that point somewhere else, maybe down at the, the center of this arc. With that all completed, we just click OK. And the cyan color is the stopping face, the yellow is what's going to be deformed into the model, and the red is the removed face. From there you can also use configurations if you want to resize them. So maybe you want to come in and for the angle of the arc, I can right click on that dimension, do a configure dimension on that, and maybe make a smaller version and change this to 45 degrees. And you can see in here we have a large and small configuration. With that done, we'll save it and it's best practice to save these in places like my documents or on a on a network somewhere that's easy to find and then you just want to add quick access so rather than saving them in this design library in the program data what I'd recommend is have it in your custom folder and then you can click on this add file location button and browse to that folder you can see it's in my documents here click OK and it adds it now what you want to do is you actually want to specify this folder as a forming tool folder otherwise you're going to be inserting a part into a part. So to do that you just right click on that folder and say forming tools folder. With that done you can see how it's just checked off. So now when you have a sheet metal part I just have a blank base flange here. You can easily just drag and drop that right on top. If you hit tab it flips the direction and then release. And you can flip the orientation if you want. Uh, you can flip the tool again this way. You can choose which configuration you want to use. It's automatically linked to the form tool so any updates to the forming tool will automatically update in this part. And for the position you can always throw in some dimensions if you want to at a specific location. With that all done, we can just click OK. And what you'll see is we have a nice forming tool in here. We have our removed faces and it's indented on the back. Now one thing to note about forming tools, when I flatten, it doesn't actually flatten the model by default. There's a couple ways to change this. One is in the properties, in the options, if you go into the document properties for this specific file, you can go to sheet metal and this option is on by default where you don't want to show the form tool punches when flattened you can turn that off whereas you can also show the profile when flattened instead so now when we flatten the part you can see it's no longer deformed but it has that profile sketch on there if you want to override it for an individual part file not 
not uh, not to pick up those document properties you can actually edit the feature and right at the very bottom we have an override document settings and you can choose whichever one you want to do so maybe don't show anything at all and when we flatten this you can see it's just the flat part